a message that I am titling Conforming to Christ. Conforming to Christ. Conforming to Christ. So in the in the in the in the few minutes that I have. In the few minutes that I have, I will try to um, to speak about conforming to Christ. Now, um, I want to read. Um, I want to read from the book of Ephesians. Uh, in the interest of time, we will read. Um, I will be quoting so many scriptures, but if you have somewhere to write. It will be important for you to write because we may not read all of them. Now, Ephesians chapter number 4. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 11. The Bible says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up, verse number 13, until we all reach the unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, allow me to read another scripture in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. <laughs> I will start from verse number 17. <coughs> Second Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number 17. The Bible reads, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all <coughs> And veil faces contemplate the Lord's glory now being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. I want to repeat verse number 18. Verse number 18 says, And we all who with unveiled faces <coughs> contemplate the Lord's glory, then we are being transformed into his image with an ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Who is the Spirit? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to share briefly about conforming to the image of Christ. And I want to say that um, if we begin the journey of humanity, we begin from Genesis chapter number one, where we begin with the story of creation. And God said, if you read Genesis chapter number one, if you go down to 26, he says, let us therefore make man in our own image and likeness. Hallelujah. So, it then means that the, 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 the object of creation, or the creation that God was creating, and this image or this creation is which is called man. So man was created in the very image and in the very likeness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, we all uh, know the story of creation.
application. I don't want to dwell there because um, that is not where I want us to focus on. But it is important for us to know that the original blueprint of man was in the image and in the likeness of God. Hallelujah. And now, um, coming to the works of salvation, we all know that um, uh, man sinned and um, was, um, you know, there was a disconnect between man and God. And Jesus now comes in, in John chapter number 3 and verse 16, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have a life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Christ comes in to bring us to a place of salvation. He comes to bring us to a place of restoration to God. And I want to begin by saying, uh, number one, that the journey of salvation is a journey of conformity to the image of Christ. Hallelujah. So the very first journey of salvation, the very first call of salvation is a call to conform to the image of Christ. And so Christ brings us to a place of salvation. And this salvation has been freely given to us, not to feel nice, but this salvation comes as a package um, with a purpose for us to conform to the image of Christ. And so there is no true salvation without a conformity to Christ. Are we together? So there is no true salvation without a conformity to Christ. If you remember the account of the disciples, the scripture says that they were first called Christians. Where? At Antioch. And why was that so? It is because they were behaving like Christ. They had a pattern like Christ. And today I want us to uh, just focus on this in a few minutes. And I want to submit to us that even as we come to the place of salvation, as we come to seek the Lord, we need to be aligned to the image of Christ. We need to be aligned to Christ. We need to come to a place where we conform to Christ, not only by our identity, not only by our title Christians, but conforming to Christ in totality. Hallelujah. Amen. And from the scripture that we have read, the Bible says in, um, in, in Ephesians chapter number 3, um, the Bible says that, um, that Christ himself, he has, Christ himself gave gifts to men, and this the Bible says, um, were for a certain purpose. He says to equip his people for the works of God. Till we can all come to the knowledge of the Son of God. So we can, we can, we can not exhaust the knowledge about Christ. The Bible says the psalmist writes, and he says that the understanding of God is unsearchable. Hallelujah. Amen. He says that as the heavens are apart, high above from the earth, so great is the wisdom of God. But this great wisdom of God, it is possible for us to tap from this knowledge. It is possible for us to tap from this 
knowledge of God. Hallelujah. And we tap from this knowledge through what I'm calling conforming to Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So, uh, there is a calling upon every believer. There is a calling upon each one of us to conform to Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Because Christ is the object, is the subject of our faith. We are, we, we, are, we are Christians because of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, my charge for us today is that we need to cultivate a desire within us. A desire within us. A desire within us. Every day, Every second, there needs to be a desire in us to conform to Christ. But we cannot conform to Christ. We cannot come to that place if we don't have the knowledge about Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And so our desire every day should be that we may know him. Hallelujah. Amen. That we may know, know him. him. Hallelujah. Amen. That we may know him. Say that I may know him. 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 Yes, that should be our desire this morning. As we as we as we anticipate to conform to Christ, our heart desire should be that I may know him. That I may know him. That we can get hold of Christ. That we can get hold of him. That we may know him. And not only knowing him, but conforming to him. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, the scripture that we have read, that um, this conforming, this, this conforming is like, <coughs> is, is in the same manner that um, you see the way, the way you, you, you stand, you stand besides, besides a mirror. What do you see when you stand besides a mirror? You see your very own image, right? So this conforming to Christ is in the same way that we, we stand beside a mirror. But the most interesting thing is that when we stand in that mirror, then the, what we see on the other side, or the subject of our image, is Christ. Hallelujah. So, so that as we, as we stand beside the mirror, then the image that we see is the image of Christ. And so we, 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 uh, we through the knowledge of Christ, we, we are being conformed, we are being conformed, we are being transformed into the image of of Christ into the image of Christ and so what happens is that as every day the word of God becomes like that mirror so we have we have Christ on the other end and then we have the word of God as a mirror and then there is us are we getting something yes. maybe I can I can I can do some simple illustration if I can get three three people just here very fast. Just three volunteers to, to come up here. Just come up here. So um who is who is just come 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 in the meeting. So um so if you just face up. Um, and then uh, 
So this is how conforming to Christ works. So here we have um, we have the mirror. <coughs> and what is the mirror? The word of God. Right? Yes. We are we are we are coming to a place of the knowledge of Christ. We are coming to a place of knowledge of Christ. And we have said that our call is that we may know him. Say that I may know him. That I may know him. So that I may know him is found in the word. So the knowledge of Christ is hidden in the word of God. So here we have the word of God. So we are, we are here. Just step, step back. So we are here. So our desire is that we may, we may come to a place of knowledge. A place of knowledge of Christ. Alright? But our knowledge is of Christ. So this is Christ. Are we together? Yes. So this is Christ. So we are, our desire as Christians is to become like Christ. So we want to become like Christ. We want to walk in the power of Christ. We want to walk in the very identity of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So that we can become like him. The Bible says he is the image of the invisible God. So Christ is the image of the invisible God. Christ is God himself. Scripture says, for it pleased the Father that in him should dwell all the fullness of God. Are we together? Yes. So all the fullness of God dwells in Christ. And salvation has worked for us. The Bible says that this is the mystery that was hidden for ages. Are we together? Yes. The mystery that was hidden for ages, that Christ is in us. Okay? Yes. Christ is in us. Now, I want to show you something. So we are here. So our goal and our object of faith is Christ. So if we have Christ, then we have the fullness of God. Remember, in Him dwells all the fullness of God. So if we have Christ, we have the fullness of God. And the fullness of God means that it is I mean, it means as it is, we have the fullness. So here we have freedom, we have liberty, we have all the miracles, we have all the power, we have all the riches, we have all the inheritance, we have everything we need in life. It is in Christ. So it is all in Christ. But we are here. Here we are. So, we are talking about conforming to the image of Christ. For us to access the riches, the inheritance, the power of God that is in the kingdom of God, it is through Christ. Okay? But we cannot come to that place unless we conform to Christ. We cannot access unless we conform. If you are writing, you can write that. We cannot access unless we conform. Alright? So, uh, we begin by that I may know him. And then now, we cannot access unless we conform. So, this is how it works. So, we are conforming to Christ. So for us to conform to Christ, for us to work the works of Christ, we need to have the knowledge of Christ. Okay? So we are here, the knowledge, the word of God. So the Bible says, or 
this illustration goes like this. Assuming we have a mirror here. Okay? So, what is on the other side of the mirror? It is Christ. So we are on this other side. Okay? So, when we look through this mirror, we see two things. And you will forgive us because we will uh, we are going to deny the laws of physics a little bit. So if you are a physics student, <laughs> you will excuse us. Because this, this is a multi-dimensional mirror. So this mirror uh, reflects two kinds of images. Okay? So this mirror, uh, it has an image of Christ on one end. Are we together? Yes. And it also has an image of ourselves. Okay? Yes. So when we look into this mirror, so we can we, we, we can see Christ. Okay? At the same time, we can see ourselves. Are we together? Yes. So we can see ourselves and we can see Christ. So how the word of God works. So when we look through the word of God, it gives us. <coughs> uh, just come here. You know, just yes, in one line. So when we are looking into the word of God, then we are seeing Christ. Are we together? Yes. We are interacting with the knowledge of Christ. So, this knowledge has the ability to transform us, okay? So, knowledge has the ability to transform us. The reason why I practice IT is because I gained knowledge about IT and that knowledge transformed me to become an IT specialist. Are we together? Knowledge has the ability to transform. So when we look through the image, we see Christ. This knowledge about Christ has the ability to transform our lives. So what happens is that the reflection that we get, we see ourselves in Christ. <coughs> Are we getting it? Yes. So this was the mirror, but the mirror <coughs> converges to be the knowledge about Christ. So when we are looking into the mirror, literally, we are looking our lives through Christ. So that the knowledge about Christ is able to transform us. That reflection of this knowledge is able to bring us to a place of transformation. And this is how conformity works. So when we look into him, he says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. So when we look into this mirror, we understand, we have a knowledge that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So what happens is that this knowledge is what we see our lives against. So this knowledge begins to align, align our lives to a place of the way, the truth, and the life. Are we together? So that the reflection from this one is the way, the truth, and the life. So the more I stare at this word, the more I get the way, the truth, and the life. So the more I stare at this word, I get the way, the truth, and the life. So the more this knowledge gets into me, I become aligned and transformed. So if you can move closer, so as I am reflecting on this knowledge, slowly by slowly, I am being... Just move. I am being transformed to become
become like Christ. So if I am at this point, just come to this point. If I am at this point, the more I behold the word, the more I look into the word, the more I get the knowledge about Christ. And this knowledge, the more it is working within me, and through conformity to that word, we can move. So a step at a time, a day at a time, I become transformed and conformed to the image of Christ. Are we together? Yes. And therefore, I become Christ like. My life is aligned to Christ through the Word of God, through the knowledge of God. Are we together? Yes. To Nailewa, he message. My illustration is simple. But this is how God has designed salvation to be. Unfortunately, we find ourselves, this is instead of being at this position. See, we, we are in a position of alignment. So you align with Christ, you have aligned to his word, and your life is aligned. So unfortunately, uh, just stand here. This is how our lives look like. Instead of us being <coughs> aligned to Christ. So this is the position that we take. You know what position is this? I have I have the knowledge of Christ. I have the knowledge of Christ. So I know that I know I know the Bible, I know what God wants of me, but something is amiss. My life is not aligned. Hallelujah. Amen. So there are three key things that I want you to get from this message today. I'm not sure how much time I have. Amen. So there are three things. Three things. If you forget the sermon today, you must not forget these three things. What is our subject today? Conforming to Christ. And we say, we begin by point number one, the desire to know him. You remember that I may know him. We, we, can, we can all say that I may know him. 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 So the journey to conforming to Christ begins at that position. That I may know him. If you make that your desire, you begin to walk this journey. That I may know him. So it means we have a focus. And our focus is Christ. We want to get to that place where we know Christ. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Everything in this kingdom has been hidden in the knowledge of Christ. Can you imagine that? The difference between what we have now and what we don't have is in the knowledge. The Bible says that faith comes from hearing and hearing of the word of God. So it is it all goes down to the knowledge. So that was one, okay? Then number two, we say that this knowledge of after having a desire to know him, that knowledge has the capacity to transform, okay? It has the capacity to transform. And we say that uh, we can
cannot we, we cannot access without <laughs> conforming. You remember that? Yes. We cannot access. We cannot access without conforming. All right. And the last the, the, the last one that we are dealing with was about um, alignment. The, uh, uh, alignment. Okay? So so this is the ideal, this is what God desires of us. That our lives are aligned to Christ. Okay? Yes. And we have seen how conformity works. So, uh, just be here. So I was explaining and I said, most of us are at this place. But where are we supposed to be? Here, okay? Being alive. So that whatever is flowing from Christ is flowing through us. Alright? We can we, we are we are aligned. So we are here. So what happens here is that we have the knowledge of Christ. We know Christ. Uh, we have his word, but something is amiss. Our lives are not <coughs> aligned. Okay? Yes. Our lives are not aligned. In other words, we have not conformed fully to Christ. So, happen you Napata, we do a lot of we do a lot of uh, missions and, and outreach. And uh, I think two weeks ago, two weeks ago we were preaching at uh, we were preaching at Thika. We had we had uh, a rally like this one at the Thumu Boys. And one of the students, uh, we we were doing one on one sessions with the boys and the girls would have come. And one of the boys was asking, uh, I'm not sure whether I need to say this, but <laughs> let me put it differently. So um, the question was, why if we, the Bible says, if you have faith as little as a master, we can say to this mountain, be moved, and it is moved. So if we have that kind of faith, and the Bible has said that, I mean, we all know that the word of God is true. So this gentleman was asking, why is it then that Christians, um, he was not a Christian, by the way. So he was asking, why is it that Christians <coughs> preach so much about faith, but there is very less of actions? So he was asking us, in the world, why does it seem like people who don't know Christ are the people who drive big cars, they seem to be doing it in life, And I was, I was quickened to this word, and I was telling them, salvation or Christianity is more than having an identity. It is about, it is a journey of conformity. So if you are here, and you believe in Christ, and in his power, Chances are, this power, this knowledge, will not work for you. Okay? So what works is here, this position. So this position works. Why? Because there is an alignment. Somebody say alignment. 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 
it brings us to a place of an alignment with Christ. That we can now therefore say, we are, the Bible says, he has qualified us to become co-heirs with Christ. In other words, we can now access the inheritance that is given in God through Christ. Because we are aligned to Christ. So when we go to Christ and we say, I need my healing in Christ. When that healing is released, we are aligned in Him. And we can receive the healing. When God is releasing the riches of His kingdom. When God is fighting for us. Then when God is releasing his spirit, we can tap into that spirit because we are aligned to Christ. So as long as it is in Christ, then it is in us. Are we together? Yes. So as long as it is in him, I can access it. So we need to move from this position. That is my message today. We need to move from this position. This is a position. In fact, when you are in this position, is what the Bible says, you are not different from the unbelievers. This position. I know Christ. I know him. But I am not aligned. I am not conformed to him. Christ wants us to be in this world. If only we can align ourselves, we can go back. cannot access the promises in God if we are not aligned to Him. If we are not conformed to Him. So today, part of what you are receiving or you receive here every day is the knowledge. But the question is, is this knowledge transforming you to conform to Christ. If you are going to come to a place of prosperity, to a place of increase, to a place of rest in God, then you must desire to know Him, you must desire to be transformed, and you must desire to conform to Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Are we together? Yes. We must conform to the church of God. We must conform. The disciples of the early apostles, they walked like Christ. And the Bible records there were so many miracles. That happened. If you read the Acts of the Apostles, it is full of miracles, encounters. If we are going to come back to that place, and I say, you are not too young to encounter Christ. You are not too young to walk in the power of Christ. You are not too young to walk in the supernatural of God. You are not too young to tap into the inheritance of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe each one of us here has a need. There is what you tell, you are telling God, this is where I want to see myself at. Not only here in school, but even in the next <coughs> five, ten years. You have a plan, you have a vision. I want to go to campus. I want to do this. I want to be in this business. I want to find myself working in this place. 
I submit to you, it is possible for you to walk in that reality. But you can only access this reality if you accept to conform to Christ. And in a minute, I want us to make a prayer in Jesus' name. I want us to make a prayer in Jesus' name.
We pray for this school also. Thank you for the teachers and the administration. We commend them to you. Give them the wisdom that only you can give. And we pray for the blessings of the Lord upon this school. We pray, oh God, could there be any forces of darkness against this school? We want to pull them down in the power that is in Jesus Christ. And we declare, oh God, may this school arise and shine in the name of Jesus. As we labor here, oh Father, we pray may you lift this school. May you change the hearts of these girls. If there is anything that is against them, we declare by the blood of Jesus. They have victory in the name of Jesus. We commend this school to you, oh God. We pray even for the principal, the deputy. We pray even for the parents and the entire fraternity of Nyakiambi, even for Mr. Wandeto that invited us. We lift them in prayer to you, oh God, and we declare the blessings of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.